characteristic. Now we should try uh, another one, which is called the part period balancing. And uh, the idea here is to choose the order horizon that most closely balance the total holding cost with the setup cost. Uh, which means that um, this is very similar to the silver mill uh, uh, heuristic, but you are not uh, dividing by the J, the number of periods, but you are rather dividing by the number of, uh, uh, well, um, now of course talking about the least, least unit cost which is uh, similar to the silver mill heuristic, uh, but instead of dividing by the, the number of uh, periods, J, you divide by the number of uh, items, or the total number you are actually producing. Uh, I will go through that first. This is described here, the least unit cost heuristic, and uh, then I will also present what we call the part period balancing heuristic, which is a heuristic that uh, will uh, try to balance the holding cost with the um, setup cost. But first, let's look at the least unit cost heuristic, which is very similar, not now the silver mill, but we just change that one. least unit cost and then we cannot actually use the formula here because this is for the silver meal but the general formula is very similar but instead of dividing by j we are dividing by the sum of the different requirements r1 plus r2 plus up to R number J. Otherwise, this method is similar to the silver meal method. So let's now try to solve this the same problem here with the least unit cost method. Uh, and uh, still, we would like to look one period at a time. Uh, and we start by looking at one, the first period. So the C of one will now be the setup cost, which is given to be 80, divided by the R1, the requirement in period 1. So if we are producing from period 1, we are producing only 18 items, which is the requirement for that period. We will have a cost here for one period, which is 80 divided by 18, which is 4.44. And then the next cost will be the C of 2, which is the situation where we are producing for two periods, 18 plus 30. Then we will have a setup cost, 80. We have to store 30 items in one period to a cost of 2. And we are dividing by 18 plus 30 and we get the result of 2.92, which is a lower average than the C1. So we will continue and check what will happen if we are producing for three periods. C of three, one setup at a cost of 80, 30 items stored in one period to a cost of two, and 42 items in two periods to a cost of 2 divided by 18 plus 30 plus 42, a total of 3.42. Which means here the C of 2 is the best solution here if we are using this technique and looking from period number 1. So let's now try to define the least unit cost solution. Still, uh, or similar to the silver mill solution, we are producing for two periods, 48 items, and nothing in the next period. And then we will start all over again. 
from period number three. And from period number three, we look at what will happen, what will the average cost, or not the, the average, or the unit cost will be for producing for only one period, which means setup cost of 80 divided by 42, which is the number of units in that particular period. This is a value of 1.90. And then the next alternative will be to produce 42 plus 5, a total of 47, store 5 in one period. Then you will have setup cost of 80 plus holding cost of 2 multiplied by 5 divided by 42 plus 5, the total number of units. And this gives us 1.92, which is slightly higher than the previous one. So here we actually are finding another solution by using this method. And the other solution will be in period 3 we should only produce the 42 items we need in that period. Like this. And then we have to continue period number 4, the setup cost for period number four will be 80 divided by the number of units, which was five. And uh, 80 divided by five should be 16. And then if we also include period number five, then we should produce 25 units. Still, we have a setup of 80 plus 20 units for one period at a cost of 2. Divided by 5 plus 20, and this will be 4.8, which is certainly much smaller than 16. So the conclusion here is to produce 40, uh, 5 plus 20 in period number 4, 25. And nothing in period 5, because then we are using what we already have produced in period number four. So let's also look at the stock here. The stock in period one, we are producing 48. We are storing 30 of them. And then nothing in period two. We are using the 30 we had left on stock. In period three, we are producing 42, which is actually exactly what we need. In period number 4, we are producing 25, we are storing 20, and in, produce, uh, in period 5, we don't have anything left on stock. So here, the cost with this technique, or the solution with this technique, will still be three setups, period 1, 3, and 4, 3 multiplied by 80, plus the number of items on stock, or the sum of the number of items, 30 plus 0, 0 plus 20, a total of 50, to a cost of 2, which is 3 times, uh, three times 80, 24, multiplied by, no, uh, plus 50 times 2, 100, which means a total of 340, which is a higher cost than the silver meal solution. So here, the silver meal heuristic was able to find a better solution than we found by using the least unit cost. But anyway, this is doesn't prove that the silver meal uh, heuristic is better than the least unit cost, because this can be different than the opposite when you have other problems. So these are two examples of heuristics that can be used to solve the lot sizing problem. And we will also talk about one third heuristic here called the part period balancing, where the idea is to choose the holding 
uh, or the order horizon that most closely will balance the total holding cost with the setup cost. Then we should just erase this one because then we don't need the formula. Part period balancing. And we should now try to find the number of periods which is closest to the ordering cost. Well, well gives holding cost closest to the ordering cost. We know that the ordering cost is 80. K is equal to 80. So this is now the setup cost or the ordering cost which we should compare with. So let's put up a table here. Look at the order horizon and then look at the holding cost. Okay, order horizon, one, which means produce 18, which is exactly what we need. And that will result in no holding cost. We are not storing anything from one period to the next one. Next alternative, order horizon two. Order horizon two means that we are ordering 48, we are storing 30 in one period to a cost of two which means that you have a total holding cost, which is 60. And then the order horizon three, we are producing 90 items. We are storing 30 in one period. We are storing 42 in two periods. 42 multiplied by two multiplied by two plus 30 multiplied by two will give us a total of 228. So if we are producing for three periods in period one, we have a total holding cost of 228. What we should now do is to compare what is the closest number of uh, the holding cost, where the holding cost is closest to the value of the setup cost or the ordering cost, which now will be here. And that means that the part period balancing solution will also be, like the other two strategies, will be to produce for two periods in period number one. Produce 48 in period one and nothing in period two. Then we should start all over again from period number three. And from period number three, an uh, order horizon of one will give no holding cost. An uh, or, uh, order horizon of two will say that we are producing 42 plus five, we are storing five in one period to a cost of two a total holding cost of 10, and an order horizon of three will mean we are producing 67 items. We are storing five in one period to a cost of two, and we are storing 20 in two periods, still to a cost of two. 20 multiplied by two multiplied by two plus five multiplied by two should be 90. And the idea on this technique, part period balancing, is to choose the holding cost which is closest to the setup cost. And here 90 is closer to 80 than 10. So that's why we are choosing this one. Which means in period number three, we should produce by looking at the solution from the part period balancing uh, technique, produce 
67. And then we have enough for of the demand for the two coming periods. And now the stock in this solution will be 48 produced in period 1, use, th uh, use 18, you have a stock of 30. And then you have nothing left on, uh, on period 2. In period number 3, we are producing 67, we are using 42, which means that we have 25 items left on stock. In period 4, we have 25, we are using 5 of them, and then we are left with 20. And these 20 are used in the last period here, 0. And now we can try to calculate the cost of this strategy. And here we have actually only two setups. We have a setup, production in period 1, and in period 3. The cost will be 2 multiplied by 80, which is the setup cost. But now we have more holding cost or storage cost. We have 30 plus 0 plus 25 plus 20 should be a total of 75 items which are stored from one period to the next period and that cost will be at the cost of 2. So here 160 plus 150 should be 310 which is the same as we found by using the silver mill heuristic, the same cost. We have identified two solutions which are exactly at the same value. This solution and this solution will give us the same total cost. This solution is poorer, has a higher, uh, higher cost, and then we should prefer one of the, the two others. But you cannot say that one of the techniques is, is better than the other, uh, because this will be very dependent on that particular problem we are solving. Sometimes we will find the best solution by using silver meal, sometimes we can find the best by using the least unit cost, and sometimes the best solution by using the part period balancing. This is dependent on, on the problem. But if we know the exact values of the parameters, uh, and, uh, and they, are, uh, they are actually exact, then it is possible to find the optimal solution for such a lot sizing problem by using uh, Lingo or another optimizer. And then I will look at that. Let's see. And here we will open Lingo and I will now try to explain because this is the same example as it also is uh, used in, in the textbook. Uh, which also is uh, quite similar to the problem you should solve in your assignment. Uh, this, uh, yeah, it is in chapter seven, and it's the the uh, example which is used as a, uh, as a general description, which is. Uh, which is defined somewhere. Uh, it is, if you look at the page 377, you can find uh, in the, what we, we here call the, the line which describes the time phased net requirements is the numbers from that example. But uh, as we will look at next week, we will see how we can uh, find or find the, the plan or the requirements when you have products which is uh, put together with other products. We have, have for example, a product here which consists of a sub product 
and another sub-product and so on. So here we will look at that problem next week, but here at least the numbers used in this example here is what is the, the net uh, requirement or the on page 377 what we call the time-phased net requirement which is also given for 10 weeks and here they are starting on week number four but we for uh, uh, for simplicity we, we can start with, with week number one and, and use 10 weeks from, from week number one so as mentioned that the heuristics is not always returning the optimal solution but they can usually find or identify a good solution to the problem. But to find the exact optimal solution, when you know that the parameter values are correct, then you can use uh, a, an optimization problem and solve this as an LP problem. Um, and we can also just define this optimization problem first. Uh, because what we want to do now is to minimize the sum of the setup cost and the holding cost. The sum of the setup cost, which will be found from one and up to, let's call it the maximum or the number of periods called the capital T, which is the setup cost, okay, multiplied by a binary variable, which is called here, delta, Greek letter delta, for each period. And this is a parameter which ha will have is binary, it, it will either have the value zero or one. And it will have the value zero if you don't have any production or setup in a period. And it will have the uh, uh, value one if there is uh, setup. Uh, and the delta, in this case, it will have the value one in period one, zero in period two, one in period three, zero in period four, and one in period five. Because this will define which periods do you have setup costs. And if this is one, then of course you have to add the k, the setup cost, and if it's zero, you don't have to add that for, for that period. Find the sum of all the setup periods uh, and the setup cost and add the holding cost multiplied by the uh, inventory for that uh, period. So we can also, or we could use it together, but uh, anyway, have two sums here, one up to t. And then the holding cost multiplied by the uh, inventory level for period i, like this. So this is the cost function, which we have used here. Number of setups multiplied by the setup cost and the number of items on stock for each period multiplied by the cost, the holding cost from s for storing from one period to the next one. So let's now look at this problem. This is the LP formulation for a similar problem. The LP formulation for the problem used in the textbook. And here we have the delta variables defined and the delta variables are defined to be binary, either zero or one. And you have 10 delta variables. So, in this example, you have a setup cost of 132, and this part of the minimization pro uh, function, uh, which is the setup cost, will then be the sum of all the periods, 10 periods, Delta 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 9, and 10, of course, multiplied by the setup cost, the k, which is 132. The holding cost in this example is 0 0.6, and this is similar, 0 0.6 multiplied by 
the inventory on stock on all these 10 periods, shown here. So this is the objective function, what we should minimize. But now, since this is a LP, or a linear programming problem, uh, we need to make sure that we have, well, the balancing constraint, that the production and the inventory level and also uh, they will balance with the requirement. The requirements are given here. 42, 42, 32, 12 and so on. This is the requirement similar to what we had here, the R vector or the R, the values of the requirement for all, in this case, five periods. In this case, 10 periods. Values given in the example in the textbook. And then we know that in the first period we don't have any anything on stock when we start the planning period here. So we know that what we are producing mi uh, minus the inventory level should be equal to the demand of 42. And if we are producing exactly 42 we need, then we don't have any inventory. If we are producing 84 to meet the demand for the first two periods, then we are using 42 in period one, and we are storing 42, which is the value of uh, the i1 variable. And similar here, <coughs> the balancing constraint, the production should meet the demand, and it will be eventually changes of the inventory level from one period to the next period. So this uh, constraint set here makes sure that the production meets the demand and the difference will be change of inventory level. Uh, we also can assume, uh, since this is not defined, we will assume non-negativity that none of the parameters should have a, could have a negative value. This is uh, by default in, in this problem. Because we are not talking about negative inventory here, we are not talking about negative production. So either we will produce nothing, zero, or we will produce something which will then, we and we should always be able to meet the demand for all the periods here. The next constraint set here will tell that the x1 variables should be smaller than or equal to a value or a constant, which here is called 439, multiplied by delta 1. And 431 is chosen to be, it's actually the sum of all these 10 demand for all these 10, uh, 10 periods, 10 weeks. Uh, but this will also say that the production should never be larger than the total demand. There's no need to produce more, so you, you shouldn't have anything left on stock after the period number 10. So this will be a maximum level of production, and the deltas will have the value either 0 or 1. These are binary variables. When they are 0, then of course the x1 should be smaller than or equal to, or then the particular x should be smaller than or equal to something multiplied by zero. And since we have non-negativity, we know that the x for that period should be exactly zero. If the delta is one, then or um, that means that you have production in these periods and then you will have a maximum uh, level, which is 439 multiplied by 1. So you should never produce more than this particular constant there, but usually it will be smaller. So this is the LP definition of uh, the lot sizing problem, where you have the given the demand for the 10 months, uh, you, have, uh, you are also given a maximum amount which should be multiplied by the deltas. And you also need to put in the actual values for the setup cost and the holding cost. Otherwise, this is quite similar to the uh, problem you should solve in, in the assignment. So let's now try to solve this. 
and we will get a total solution for this example, which has an objective value of 610.2. It has deltas, which has the value 1 in period 1, period 6, and period 9. Which means in period 1, you should produce for period 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then a new setup in period 6, producing for period 6, 7, and 8, and a new setup in period 9, for 9 and 10. The actual inventory level is given as the values on the i variables here. You are producing in period number 1, you are producing and you are storing 112 to the next period, and then you are storing 70 to the next, 38 to the next, and 26 to the next, and then in period number 5 you ha don't have anything left, because this is before a new setup period. In period 6, you are producing a total of the demand in that period, plus 59 items. You are storing 59 to the next, and storing 14 to the next, and then a new setup in period number 9, and so on. And also, here you can see the exact size of the production. So, production period 1, 154. You will use 42, which is the actual demand, and then you have 112 left. Then you will use 42 more, have 70 left. Use 32, have 38 left. Use 12, have 26 left. And use 26, I have nothing left, before you start a new production run in period number 6. Produce 171. You will use 112 in period 6, which is the demand, 59 left, use 45, and store 14 to the period number 8, and then a new production in period 9, which is the total amount for period 9 and 10. So this is now the LP solution for, uh, for a lot sizing problem, which is similar to the example used in the textbook. We could also, of course, uh, just put in the small example here for the five periods. Should be pretty easy. Then we have five periods. I have a total of 80. Then we have to remove this. Only five periods. Also, we have a holding cost of two. Five periods. And here we had the demand of 18, we had the demand of 30, and then 42, and then 5, and then 20, and uh, then we should re uh, remove these and these, because we have only 5 periods. And we can also, well, we can use 439, it doesn't matter because this is some kind of upper limit. And here the upper limit can be 18 plus 30 plus 42, 90, 115, I think. Try to solve that one. And we will find out that the optimal solution here is 310, which is the same value we have found in two different ways. So here it's possible to get two different solutions which have an uh, objective value of 310. And here it's quite uh, well coincidental how which solution which is to be returned, but this is like we can see here, similar to the silver meal solution. Even if we have found out that the part period balancing solution has the same objective value. Then why doesn't the uh, link tell you that you have Well, it finds, the, it uses some mathematical methods and returns the, uh, the, the first solution it will find. It doesn't tell you if there are any others. There might be. Uh, in uh, optimization problems, there might be loads of millions or billions different solutions, and there could be several at the same level. Uh, but uh, the, the mathematical models used in, the, uh, in this mathematical uh, 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 software will return one of them.
the first one they will find, which they can prove is optimal. So that was, yeah, then I think I have presented what we should need to solve. Oh, well, to solve the assignment, assignment number, uh, th uh, problem number three in, in assignment number three. Uh, I will also upload one example, which I have not presented in the lecture, but we, you can use that one as uh, to, to look at uh, how to solve a problem, a lot sizing problem, with the three different methods, we ha uh, heuristics we have seen, the part period balancing, the least unit cost, and the silver meal cost. Um, yeah, problem 713 on page 380. I will upload the solution in front of us, so you can look at that one if you uh, if you need to, to look at some more examples. But anyway, you should now be able to solve the problem number three in, in the assignment and, and to solve a lot sizing problem by using different heuristics and also to optimality. And then next week, I will continue with some more theory on uh, from chapter seven on the, in particular, the MRP, uh, the material requirement planning strategy. Uh, where you can use this strategy to plan what you actually need and you will might end up with a requirement which can be shown here and solved as a lot sizing problem. But that have to wait until next week. <laughs> <laughs>